Hey there, so today I want to talk about the Arduino. This is something that I just love playing with. Uh, it's a very, very easy to use, very simple and unhindered <laughs> little computer board. What it allows you to do is write C programs that take basic input and output, and you upload it onto the chip, and then when you supply power to it, the chip just runs it. It's a very, very simple system. You've got not much in the way of expansion on this. Uh, you know, having said that, if you look at the chip, you've got pins down the side of the chip that plug into the motherboard, but those also are replicated on the outside with these holes. And this allows you to then plug in electronics into these holes and basically access what's on the chip. Very, very simple idea. As well as that, you also have a little button here and there is a power LED here. There's another LED up here that is tied to pin 13, but we'll come to that in a minute. And then you've got a transmit and receive set of LEDs. Other than that, I mean, it's just a clock and a few other little bits and bobs and some capacitors, and that's pretty much it. So how this works, if I turn it around this way, you can actually see there are a certain number of pins on the chip which are dedicated to power. There are then these A0, A1, A2, and so forth. These are for analog. And then on this side, if I turn it around this way, uh, you can see here we've got digital PWM squiggle. Right, so what this means, these are digital pins. They basically have a high or a low state, unlike these ones over here, where you can have sort of a low amount of power, a medium amount of power, and the high power. These ones on here, they're either on or off. Um, but you can also do what's called phase width modulation, which is a way of faking a half signal, for instance. So if I take a strobe light and strobe it very, very fast, you will see the light and go, OK, that's a bright light. But if I slow down the strobes, eventually it gets dimmer and dimmer because the amount of time that it's on is getting less and less, and the amount of time that it's off in between the on bits are getting longer and longer, that gives you the effect of a dimming light. The same can be said for a signal in digital mode, where phase width modulation basically allows you to send a binary signal in discrete chunks and be able to break them up in such a way that it makes it look as if you've got a half or a quarter or whatever you know fraction of the signal you actually wanted. So, this thing, although it has a power here, you can actually run it straight off of USB. There is enough power in USB to run this thing. And um, yeah, so I'm going to plug this in and literally you're going to see if I do this properly. There we go. So right now you can see the power light is on, but there's also this light flashing over here. Now, going back to these pins, number 13, which is right next to the light, pin number 13 here, that is going positive, or the power is going on to that hole, rather, every time this lights up. So how does this work? What I'm now going to do is show you the software that drives it, and it's very, very simple. What we have here is the basic Arduino code editor. When you start a brand new sketch, which is what they call a program in this system, this is what you get on the screen. As you can see, there's not really too much to it. There are two areas. You have this area here, which is a void function, which means it doesn't return anything. It's just something that runs, and it's called setup. And you have another function down here called void loop. And as it tells you, you put your setup code in the top bit. That will run once when power is applied to the Arduino. And then anything that's down in here will just keep running over and over and over. So a classic example of this would be, for instance, you declare a variable up here. So let's say int i. Here I could say i equals 100. And down here, you know, i minus minus, which if you're not a programmer, just basically means i is whatever i was, take away 1. If I changed it to plus plus, it would be i equals whatever i was plus 1. This is where the, the C++ um, name comes from, because you've got C, and the idea was this was C plus a little bit more, so it was just called C++. <clears throat> so that is you know, the very, very most basic 
program that you could possibly write, I think, in an Arduino. Um, so what I'm now going to do is just replace this with the code that's actually running right now. And I'm going to quickly run you through it. So what we have is the void setup function. So this runs once. And you can see here, it calls something called pin mode. And it says the pin by the ID of LED built in, set it to output mode. Now, LED built in is actually just number 13. If I put that, that is exactly the same as what was there before. But rather than us having to remember what 13 was, they have this uh, keyword called LED built in. Now, down in the loop area, there is this function called digital write. So it says write to the LED built in pin, the value high. And what that does is it sends, if I go back to the Arduino, it sends a high voltage to that hole numbered number 13. Going back, it then delays for a thousand milliseconds, which is one second, and then it writes to that same pin, this time the value low. So going back to our Arduino, now the pin that did have a five volt uh, value going to it is now back down to zero. And that's literally all that's turning on and off this LED because this LED is hardwired to that, that hole. Going back to the code, delay for another thousand milliseconds, which is one second, and it will then go over and over. And so because it's turning on and then waiting a second and turning off and waiting a second, that's why this is doing that. Once you've finished writing your code, you upload it from the Arduino editor to the board and it starts running. It's literally that simple. So this is the full size Arduino. Just to give you an idea of some of the other types, this is the LilyPad Arduino. And the idea of this one is that you can upload your programs into this and then using conductive thread, you can actually wire stuff into your clothes. So the idea for this is that you put your program on it. There is a, a little interface you can see here for updating. So you, you plug into this rather than a standard USB port. Uh, but this chip here is pretty much identical to what's going on here. It's a little bit more expensive and a little bit lighter in power requirements. But you've still got your little button that you can press. Uh, I can't see. Oh, it does actually have the LED there. Yep. So it has a little LED as well. So that is the lily pad. And then on top of that, we have the Arduino Pro Mini. And this is the 3.3 volts. So this is the small one. Um, very, very tiny. Like there's, there's absolutely nothing to this. And just to give you an idea of scale, uh, if I put a quarter. So that's a quarter. Uh, if you are not North American, think of a 10 pence piece from Great Britain. That would work. Um, I'm just trying to think what else, what other countries. Maybe uh, if you are French, think of the old French franc about that size. Uh, so yeah, this, this is uh, the Arduino series that I have. So as well as the standard Arduino, you can get these things called shields that sit on top. And basically they, they just plug into, you know, like the, these pins on the top, plug in to those holes on the bottom. But you can get different ones for robotic. You can get some for the uh, mobile LCD screens. There's all different types. Uh, definitely worth checking out. But the reason I really love the Arduino is its simplicity. If you just wanna mess around and do some very, very simple code that you know just does something really simple like reads a value off of a sensor, this is the absolute perfect platform for doing that. So anyway, I, I love these Arduinos. I've always been a fan of them ever since I had my first one. I've had several of these Arduino Unos because I have a habit of building things that then the Uno, it ends up staying in it, which then means I have to go and buy another Arduino in order to do my prototyping. And then obviously some prototypes turn into more permanent projects. So again, it, it you know, gets taken up again. That's why I then started buying these because, you know, you can take the same program that runs on the big one, put it on the little one, that now still leaves me the big one to play with and instead I can just use this to run whatever the project is. Uh, obviously sometimes you have to change the way that you lay out your electronics because obviously this can handle five volts and this is only a 3.3 volt system. 
which does mean it will run off of two AA batteries. Absolutely no problem. So anyway, yeah, that is uh, the Arduino. All right, see you next time.